Um, tell me how cumulative voting has helped your activity in the 1970s. Well, it, helped, it did more than help our activities. It helped us. Cumulative voting. Cumulative voting did more than help our activities. It helped, uh, cumulative voting helped us to win, for the first time in West Side history, uh, a political position. Which one was that? That was state rep, uh, state representative. Yeah. Uh, we were, used to be the 21st district. For years in, in West Side politics, uh, the Democratic machine under Richard J. Daley controlled everything. On when election time came, they controlled inside the polls, outside the polls. We would go out, knock on doors, give folks a spiel of our candidates, and they'll say, I'm coming out to vote for them. And they might would come out to vote, but the vote would be stolen uh, on election day. Uh, if 300 people voting in my precinct and 200 for my candidate, the figure would be changed, the opposite, by the time the count went down. Because we had no one inside to protect. So we would locate the vote, get it to the polls, but we couldn't protect it. Cumulative voting gave us an opportunity because instead of us needing 50% plus one to win, we only needed 33 and a third percent plus one because of the way cumulative voting was. You got three votes that you could give to three different people, one each, or two people, one and a half, or you could give one person what we call the bullet vote, all three of your votes. So we asked all of the people that we talked to to give us their bullet vote, all three. So that's, and I think that's why cumulative voting was, the, made it uh, where we could win the first office to beat the machine, and that was state representative of the 21st Ward with Representative Jesse Madison in 1974. What did it mean to have somebody on the inside? It meant that uh, what happened in 70, Jesse ran in 72, mm -hmm. and Jesse lost by 3,000 votes, cumulatively. Mm -hmm. We had 49 judges indicted for vote fraud. When they figured up how many votes they had stolen, Jesse should have won by 300 votes because they figured they had stolen about 3,300 votes and he lost by 3,000. Didn't make any difference, he still hadn't won. So I went down to the Republican Central Committee and talked to the chairman of the Republican Party and said, there's no such thing as a Republican Party on the West Side. So if you let our folks become the, the Republican judges, instead of your Republican county and state candidates getting ripped off and our independent city candidates getting ripped off. We'll guarantee you a fair and honest count. We'll vote Republican in the primary, split in the general, and everyone will win. So he bought it. So in 1974, I placed 107 of our people as Republican judges. Told them they'd have to vote Republican, and that was like pulling teeth with no anesthetic. But I explained to him it's a tactic. If you want to see Jesse Madison win, your one vote that you would give him by staying a Democrat uh, will prevent 50 votes from being stolen from him if you become a Republican judge. So they all bought it. So when they went into those precincts and all those judges saw that there was a fresh, unknown face in that precinct as a judge with equal power, because our poll watchers, they'd put them out, but a judge with equal power, all of a sudden they start saying, I'm not going to jail for anybody. So Jesse Madison won by 174 votes. Could that was cumulatively. Right. Could Jesse Madison have won without cumulative voting? Jesse Madison could never have won without cumulative voting because we can only get to so many of the voters and we talked them into giving us that bullet vote. That meant three votes. So consequently, each person who gave us three votes, Jesse's opponents, and there were two of them, Jesse's opponents would have to each give up three votes to equal the three they gave us and three to go ahead of those three, so that was six votes that they had to give up to match us or, or, or either beat us. So cumulative voting, unlike voting today where you got a single vote, my single one vote, if I was voting against you, you would have to use one to equal mine and one to go ahead of mine. Cumulative voting, and I get the bullet, you'd have to use three votes to equal mine and three to go ahead of mine. So you can see there that you're going to need a heck of a lot of votes to equal however many bullets that I got.
in cumulative voting. And Illinois was the only state that had cumulative voting. Mm -hmm. And we went around the, the state and the city trying to protect cumulative voting when they put it on referendum because we even had people from Massachusetts who said how they had suffered since they had gotten rid of cumulative voting. But uh, the Richard J. Dale, they spent a mint of money to get uh, to make us go from cumulative voting. Then we had Pat Quinn with the, the little gadfly, and who was always coming up with something. He said that it would cut away all those 4,000 bills, and it would make government better. And since we got rid of cumulative voting, our state representatives are spear carriers. Tell, tell me what uh, you mean by a spear carrier. Well, here we have uh, 118 state representatives and they'll go in the session. And they might be there from Tuesday through Friday and never have meet in one session because they're waiting to hear what Mike Madigan, the Speaker of the House, Lee Daniels, the Minority Leader of the House, Pate Phillips, the, the pro tem of the Senate, and Emu Jones, the Minority Leader of the Senate, and the Governor. So five people control the state legislature, and here we have nothing. So it, was it different when we had cumulative voting in the House? Not only was it different, it was the most fantastic thing that you would ever want to see. When we had cumulative voting, that's when people had representation. That's when the body, the, the State House was a total deliberative body. Uh, when Jesse Madison went into the House in 1972, well, let's go back to 1996, Mike Madigan, Mike Madigan became the Speaker of the House on one roll call. He was elected Speaker. In 1972, when Jesse Madison went into the House, Redmond, who became the Speaker of the House, it took close to 100 roll calls before they got a Speaker. And the reason it took that many was the fact that cumulative voting meant that you would have two majority party people from each district and one minority party people. So that would be, if this was a Democratic area like the West Side is, there would be two Democratic reps and one Republican rep. If this was DuPage County, which is Republican, you'd have two Republican reps and one Democratic rep. So when you get down to Springfield, all of the Republicans from Chicago were independent Republicans, and all of the Democrats from downstate or outside of Cook County in the Republican areas were usually independent Democrats. So consequently, they didn't owe allegiance to any party. They dealt for people. So cumulative voting gave us enough state reps who were independent that they had enough votes that they could control any issue that came up in the state legislature. And we had some fantastic independent Democratic and Republican state reps with cumulative voting. Could you, could you talk about what some of those um, independent representatives did when they got to Springfield and what it meant for independents like yourself? Well, the main thing was that it, it gave people, gave low voters an opportunity to elect someone that was going to look out for the best interests of their community. Uh, Susan Catania, who was a Republican state rep, a white Republican state rep, represented the near south, uh, took in part of the north end of Hyde Park, and it also took in Stateway, Ickes, uh, a little piece of Robert Taylor and, and Rockwell Guard. I mean, uh, Ida B. Wells, that all CHA ho housing. Susan Catania introduced during the 10-year period that she was in the, in the State House, she introduced about 90 pieces of legislation, most of which was for the, to better the quality of life of a lot of those women who were single head of households, who lived in CHA, and who were from the lower economic bracket. I'd like you to tell that story again, but this time when you explain, try, just tell that story again and explain that those housing projects are you know, Chicago Housing Authority. CHA. Mm -hmm. One more time. Oh, it's Chicago Housing Authority, because right, folks don't know what CHA is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So try, I'd like, that's a great story I'd like you to tell. I hope I can remember it like that. Yeah. Well, no, say it Forget that you said it. However you said it. Yeah. Just say it again. Just tell us the story. Forget that you said anything. Yeah. I'll ask the mm -hmm. question again. Could you describe how um, 
what it meant to, for people to have people like Susan Catania in the House of Representatives. Yeah, cumulative voting uh, had uh, the reason that it was so great to have a Susan Catania, who was a Republican, by the way, but who represented a 90 percent low income black constituency who lived in the Chicago Housing Authority. Uh, I'd say at least 60 percent of her constituents were from the Chicago Housing Authority. She spent the bulk of her time during the 10 years that she was there. She introduced, I'd say, about 90 bills, 90 percent of which was to try and better the quality of life of those people who lived in the Chicago Housing Authority. On the west side with Jesse Madison, who was our state rep, who won by that 174 votes. I'll never forget that when you go past a certain period in the state legislature, because they, they used to would, would stop about June 1st, the whole, the whole, June 30, the whole legislature would shut down. But they would stop the clock and hold the calendar back. They might not adjourn the thing until July the 6th or 8th. But after a certain period, it took a supermajority vote to pass a bill. And I'll never forget, we wanted a swimming pool at Columbus Park, which is out in Austin, because the kids in that community had nowhere to go swimming except the high schools, which closed at a certain period. So Jesse Madison waited till a bill came up, and he tacked on to that bill the money that would have given those kids that swimming pool. And when everyone starts screaming about Jesse had takes a super majority. Jesse says, well, if you can spend X hundreds of thousands of dollars to put a bridge across some river downstate, then I'm going to make you spend 20000 to put a swimming pool in Columbus Park for my constituents. Now, if you don't want to give me that swimming pool, then you don't get that bridge. That's what cumulative voting did. It made each of those state reps where they had the independence that they didn't have to worry about the machine getting them elected because they only needed 33 and the third percent of the vote plus one. Whereas with single member districts, the machine controls. Mike Madigan sends out at least two mailings before every election. If you ran against one of the incumbent state reps, Mike Madigan would have people from his staff to go over your petitions. And if you had any flaw, his attorneys would knock you off the ballot. If they didn't knock you off the ballot, they'd make you spend attorney fees to defend their objections against your signatures before you can even get on the ballot. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to worry about that then because they didn't need Mike Madigan's support in order to get elected. That's the difference between cumulative voting, whereas it's people-oriented, and single-member district voting, whereas the, your state reps are controlled by the party leadership which means if Mike Madigan say this doesn't go, that doesn't go with any Democratic rep. If, if uh, uh, Lee Daniels say this doesn't go, that doesn't go with any Republican rep because they control. And, and if they defy them, then they will not make them any chairmanships of, give them any chairmanships of committees. If, if you live, if you were representing me in, on the west side of Chicago, they would put you on the agricultural committee. And there's no agriculture here, except the tomatoes she do in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what they would do. So consequently, now they are spear carriers. That's what I call them. Mm -hmm. And I've managed all of Art Turner's campaigns. I've had him since he was eight in my little league team. So then when he became 26, he wanted to run for state rep because Jesse Madison resigned. You know, he, he retired after two terms. So I started managing Art's state rep campaign. That's how Art won, cumulative voting. He followed in Jesse's footsteps. And that will be 20 years ago come January. Yeah. Do you, um, why do you think, could you talk about the 1980 campaign to get rid of cumulative voting a bit? The 1980 campaign was mainly Pat Quinn, who has always professed to be a muckraker or an independent, if you ask him. And it was interesting because the Daly machine, Richard J. Daly, well, uh, Richard M. Daly was, was uh, coming up in the machine, but he wasn't part of it. But the machine's hierarchy apparatus, although Richard J. was gone, 
the hierarchy of the machine, wanted to get rid of cumulative voting because that way they could knock out all of the Republicans from Chicago that were state reps. And downstate, Republicans wanted, and, and the collar counties wanted to get rid of cumulative voting because they could knock out all the Democratic state reps. Because cumulative voting had tied their hands. They could not control the representatives from their different parties. Uh, downstate Democrat, uh, Republicans can control those who got elected. Uh, Chicago and Cook County Democrats can control theirs. So they wanted to get rid of it. Pat Quinn called himself going to gain some publicity because he was getting ready to run for a different office. He contend that, that the way that the, legislate, the, the House ran, there were about 4,000 bills introduced every session, which cost a lot of money. And he just gave a litany of things like that, that how we could save this, we could save that, we could save that. So then we went to single member districts instead of cumulative voting where you had two majority and one minority in each district. You had only one, but you'd have two representatives in each Senate district or each in each legislative district. So what that gained though was that it made those state reps beholden to the Speaker of the House. And the Speaker of the House who uh, I think Mike Madding has been the speaker for I don't know how many years now. I'm trying to remember the speaker before Mike Madding. I know Redmond was speaker. Ryan, yeah, Ryan was the speaker because the Republicans had it for a while. Um, you're doing wonderfully, by the way. Um, right now, a lot of people would think the idea of an elected black Republican would be laughable. But you're telling me that... We had it doing cumulative voting. Charlie Gaines. Charlie Gaines, who represented uh, the Chatham area, Chatham and part of the 6th Ward. Ch the Chatham area is, is on the south side, which runs from... Chatham runs from about 78th Street south to, to the 90s, uh, west of, of Cottage Grove Avenue. But it's, it takes in all that area where most of the black professionals lived. Charlie Gaines ran as a Republican candidate way back before cumulative voting uh, was knocked out. Charlie Gaines won that seat because he talked enough uh, intellectuals to vote for him, Charlie Gaines. Not he, Charlie Gaines, a Republican, but he, Charlie Gaines, the state rep who was going to look out for their interests in Springfield. And Charlie Gaines won two, two or three terms as state rep. In fact, he was only knocked out after they knocked out cumulative voting. But he was an excellent legislator. Susan Catania that I was talking to you about, uh, cumulative voting kept putting her in. Uh, she, she's the one who coined the phrase, a woman's place is in the House, the House of Representatives. And she ended up, she, although she was pro-choice, Susan Catania had seven year olds while she was a state legislator in Springfield, even though she was pro-choice. Her choice was to have seven daughters. And uh, that's what I'm talking about. She was just a, an excellent uh, lawmaker because the bills that she introduced were just fantastic bills. Same thing with Jesse Madison. But you had a host of state reps. You had Jesse Madison, you had Susan Catania, you had Pete Petrovic, you had uh, the man that's running for assessor now, uh, Jim Houlihan. He was, uh, he was in that, that batch that they had. You had Bob Downs. You just had a host of community-oriented people, people who cared about people who felt their job in government was a lookout for the quality of life of their constituents. And that's what they ran on, and that was the way they act when they got down in Springfield. And it was interesting that, that the machine could not control them, because it was so many of them. And they had the votes that don't care what the bill was, their votes could sway that bill whichever way they wanted to take it. And we had good legislation at that time Bad legislation, as a rule, could not get the votes of the majority of the people who, who they'd have to depend on to get those votes. If you had a good idea 
and my idea in my district could help some people in your district, cumulative voting made it where each of us could vote in the best interest of our constituency. That doesn't happen now. You'll find that state reps take a walk. Bill come up that's controversial. You ask your rep, how did you vote? He'll say, oh, I didn't vote against it, but he didn't vote for it. He took a walk. <laughs> so, you know, that way he doesn't have to do anything. But that didn't happen back then. They stood there and vote, and they would lobby, and they would filibuster, and that's what they did. Because cumulative voting allowed them to be elected? Cumulative voting, not only, it allowed them to, be, to get elected, it allowed them the independence of the machines, Republican or Democrat, but it held them accountable to their constituents because if, you, if I helped you win cumulatively, with 33 and a third plus one percent of the vote, if you went down and jumped in their pocket, I could go out and get the same people who helped elect you, we could elect your, your opponent next time. We can give him or her the 33 and the third plus one percent of the vote. That's what cumulative voting did. You aren't worried now because I got to go out and get 50 percent plus one. There's a big difference when you're talking about 33 and a third plus one and 50 plus one. That's the difference. Did it take a lot of money? It took very little money. And let me sh give you a for instance. In 1976, Jesse Madison ran for re-election. He won in 74. So we, ha we uh, it, it was after the remap. So we had a state senator who came up for re-election, who didn't live in our community, who didn't vote for anything because our district became 75% black, the west side of Chicago. The, the remapping of 1970 made the west side of Chicago 75% black, and 25% came from Oak Park and Forest Park. So we had 144 precincts, 107 in Chicago. So Jesse Madison, who had won only by 174 votes in 76, ran for re-election in 70, I mean in 74, ran for re-election in 76. We didn't like this state senator, who was very racist, named Welch, voted never in anything in our best interest of the district. So we, want, we, we were looking for someone to run against him. So I went around and I had talked to a lot of young blacks with degrees and I was candid with them. I said, there's a 60-40 uh, chance you'll lose, but if you want to run in the future, this will be a good way for you to get your name up. So now and then bought it. So I ran into Earlene Collins, who I had met when her husband ran for Congress, Otis Collins. And Earlene was pretty gutsy, so I told, uh, Earlene called me and she said, uh, there are people who are saying that I should run against Welch for the Senate. And she laughed and said, what do you think about it? I said, well, Earlene, I told all the young men it was a 60-40 chance they'd lose if they ran. But with you, it would be a 60-40 chance that you would win because Congressman Cordes Collins is running in the same area by the machine. So every time she'd put up a poster that would read Cordes Collins, Cordes would be so small, all the people are going to see is Collins. So there's a 60-40 chance that you could win. She said, but this is Friday, and the last day they file is Monday. I said, I'll get your petitions. So I called a friend of mine who was in the Democratic machine and said, Willie, I need one of Welch's petitions. He says, what are you going to do with it, Dick? I says, I'm going to run someone against Welch. He says, okay, I'll bring it over. So he brought it over. I had another friend to change, pay, do a paste up over Welch's name and address. Everything else was the same. I just put Earlene Collins and her address. So I had enough signatures. Welch had voted six times against ERA. ERA was big in Illinois at that time. This is 75, December 75. So uh, we ended up getting 375 signatures. We needed 300. Now, at 12 o'clock on that Monday, I borrowed Jesse Madison's car and took off for Springfield. I couldn't take out mine because I didn't think it would make it. But then I got about 150 miles outside of Chicago, and all of a sudden I hear all of this noise coming out from under the hood. So I, I was lucky and blessed enough to be right at an exit. So I went out the exit and came around the other side, going the opposite way. There was an Amico station. 
So I pulled up in Namico Station, and the fellow said, you have blown a rod. So I says, oh my goodness, I got this woman's petitions, I got to get to Springfield, I don't have that much time, today is the last day at 5 o'clock, they close. So three weeks before, we had gotten a MasterCard that I had put in my wallet. And so I asked this guy, I says, do you know where I can rent a vehicle? He says, I rent cars. So I says, great, I gave him the MasterCard, I rented the car, we went on to Springfield. I got to Springfield 10 minutes of five to file Earlene's petition. And Earlene won by 62 votes. Jesse Madison won. Instead of 174 and 74, Jesse won by 2,596. Because he had been such a good rep, most people that came out to vote gave Jesse their bullet, three votes. And remember I said, each time he got three, his two opponents would have to give up six each. So he won by 2,500 and some votes. Um. <clears throat> but I have a story on, on cumulative voting in that same election. This one precinct, uh, we ended up getting all the judges indicted for vote fraud. And the precinct captain spent two years in jail. His wife had two years probation. We had 103 people to vote in that precinct, total. It was a low voting precinct. These 103 people went in and voted. When our watcher, when they opened up the machine, our watcher, they wouldn't let our watcher see what was on the back. That's when we had the big monstrosities and you read off the back. The police put her out. When I got the tickets from downtown, they had Jesse Madison, 71 votes. They had uh, Lang Langdon Patrick, one of Jess's opponents, something like 1,100 and some votes. And they had Jess's other opponent, 1,100 and some votes. So with only 103 people voting cumulatively, the, the maximum would have been 309, right? So they had 20 some hundred people voting if you figured what Jesse got, what they got. So we challenged it at the canvas, naturally. So we had one of the, the most honest people who had become head of the Chicago Board of Election Commissioners, because this was right after uh, Edward J. Barrett had been indicted in, from the county, and Dale had put Stanley Cusper from Chicago to the county board, and he brought in a man named John P. Hadley, who was a former FBI man, uh, head of FBI for the Midwest. He was a former rear admiral in the Navy, retired, totally honest. So we called, we filed objections against it. He called all the judges in and said, judges, 103 people voted cumulatively. That's 109, I mean, 309 votes cast for all three uh, uh, candidates. How did you get 20 whatever, 100 and something? And each of them said, that's what was on the machine. So all of us got into a, a van, and we went to the warehouse at 321 East 21st Street and opened up that machine from the 5th Precinct of the 29th Ward. And sure enough, it had Jesse Madison, 71, Langdon Patrick, instead of 1,100 and something, he had 46. Ike Sims, instead of 1,100 and something, he had 97. But, you know, two win. So Jesse and Ike won that precinct. But that's, that's you know, fantastic. Yeah. How, um, how did the, uh, how did having cumulative voting for the House affect other races? It affected other races taking Jesse Madison's 1976 election when Earlene Collins ran. After I talked, filed Earlene's petitions, Earlene said, well, you know, I don't have any money, I don't have any people, blah, blah, blah. So why don't you talk to Jesse Madison? I said, you're running in the same area. So she talked to Jesse. Jesse says, I don't mind. Oak Park, which was a third of our district, I had a fellow over there coordinating Jesse's campaign. Remember, this is 75 for the 76 election. He contend that I would have to find someone else to coordinate Earlene's campaign in Oak Park because he, could, he felt that he couldn't 
coordinate the campaign for two black candidates. So while Tom was doing justice, I had someone else to coordinate Orleans. But everything that we would do, we would, we had a fellow who died a few years ago named Larry Hopp, who was born on 700 South on Costner, and who we called the Mad Printer. When he became 33, he got his family inheritance. His, although his parents died about eight years before, he couldn't get it until he was 33. So when he got his inheritance, the first thing he did was went out and bought a Moby Dick duplicating machine and all the stuff that goes with it. So he used to turn out all of our printing. So we'd do a paste up and I would take it to Kiko's and have it run off, say, 10 or 12, then he would duplicate it. He'd make a, a, a stencil of it and just duplicate everything. So we would have half for Jesse Madison and half for Orleans. Jesse and Earlene for the Jesse's rep seat with cumulative voting and Earlene's Senate seat, independent Senate seat, we spent $10,500. Now, Jim Houlihan, who ran for state rep of the 13th district, which took in Old Town and the near north side, and Senator Don Clark Netch, who just ran for, for governor last time, Jim spent sixty some thousand dollars. Don spent sixty some thousand dollars. So together, theirs was like a hundred and thirty some thousand dollars. Jesse Madison's in New Orleans, running for a Senate and House seat too, spent only ten thousand dollars. And they did that because New Orleans' stuff was on everything that Jesse had. And we asked folks, show your independence. Put your bullet here by Jesse's name. So Jesse just got so many bullet votes till he won by 20, 2,500 and something. He just knocked out everyone because of that bullet vote. And that's how independents or people-oriented candidates and people can win elections against all odds. Because if you can get the people that you can convince of your candidacy or, or either your, your candidate's candidacy as far as being in their best interest, then they'll say, I think I'll just give him these three. So you get enough people giving you threes, they add up fast. Much better, easier than one, you know. Um, so then could you tell me a bit how cumulative voting affected citywide independent politics? Well, it affected citywide independent politics because remember, during most of the cumulative voting time, we had Richard J. Daly. And we had, he controlled this city with an iron fist, with his patronage army and all of that other stuff. But we were able to get people there. In other words, when I ran Jesse Madison's campaign, I might have to talk to 20 people before I got one. Because the first thing I'd have to tell folks is, we have no money and we don't have any jobs. But if you want to see change, help us. And so the one person that I'd get they were like fanatics. They'd help. And the machine thought we had 500 people in Jesse's campaign when we only had 50. But those 50 people were working three precincts. And those 50 people, I mean, they spent all hours of the day and their time off. Whereas the machine had people, they were paying sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 back then, which was real big money, to do nothing but sit and figure how to defeat us. We had to go put in eight hours and then come home. And my wife would tell you, a lot of times I didn't get home until 12, 1 o'clock because the phone would stop ringing after 10. And that's when me and Jesse and folks, Larry Hopp, the one man I was telling you about, we would sit down and strategize. And we would try to set up counters of what we could do so that whatever those men did that, that was their think tank, before they could bother anything that would come or touch us, they'd have to hit our counter that type of thing. It was interesting. When you were thinking of your different strategies, how important was having the bullet vote? Oh, that was the whole thing. If, if had we not had the bullet vote, I don't know if we would have run a state rep candidate back then because it was so difficult because of the area that you were running in. You know, remember, a state rep in those days represented like 190,000 people. It's not like today. 
So they, they represent about 96,000 people. Art Turner, who is my state rep, and all the other state reps, represents about 96,000 people. Back then, a state rep's area represented 196,000 people. Although each district had three state reps, all three of them ran in the same area. So consequently, uh, and you didn't just have this area, you'd have double that area to work in. So without the bullet vote, when you had double that area, it would have been very difficult because you were going across so many different community lines. You know, like our district was Lawndale, Garfield, Austin, Oak Park, and then we had nine precincts in Forest Park. So each of those areas, you got a whole different community. What we did with cumulative voting, because Daly, when he did the remap, he put three quarters black west side Democrat with one uh, uh, quarter white Oak Park Republican. So, but there were still some white Democrats in Oak Park. So in 1972, Jesse Madison and I went over to Oak Park, and we found some white Democrats called the Oak Park Independent Democratic Organization. So we got with them and said, how can we defeat the machine? And the first thing we looked at was state rep cumulative voting. Because if you can get bullets and we get bullets, we can beat them. So that's what we did. Because they were running two people to try and win. We were running one. So the two people that they ran, they would have to tell their folks, give, give him one and a half and him one and a half. And we were telling folks, give Jesse three. So that was cumulative voting. We wouldn't have tried it otherwise, because I don't think we could have done it. In other words, you need a, with cumulative voting, you need a minority of good people to win. Whereas in one-on-one, you need a majority of a lot of people to win, which is much more difficult to get, especially when you're crossing so many different community lines with so many different uh, community interests. Mm -hmm. um, this is great, by the way. Um, so you're saying that cumulative voting helped bring people uh, from different communities and different races together. It helped bring them together, plus it helped little people to see that it, things weren't like that they tried to tell us that you can't beat City Hall. That was the whole phrase in Chicago. During my entire life, I'll be 68 in March, the entire phrase during my entire life was that you can't beat City Hall. In fact, people used to say, there goes Barnett again, he and his little merry band spinning their wheels. <laughs> but that was up until 74. In 74, Jesse Madison won. Then they said it was a fluke. And then in 76, because of cumulative voting, instead of 174 votes, Jesse won by 2,500 and some votes. Then they said, well, he was just lucky. Then in, when Jesse went out, Art Turner came right behind him and just kept winning. And then Earlene Collins, who ran for the Senate in 76, because of the amount of people that we had gotten involved through cumulative voting for Jesse Madison, Earlene Collins beat the machine for the first time in the history of the West Side black community in a one-on-one -on -one Senate race by 62 votes in 144 precincts. That was just a little over, what, a half a vote a precinct. But that's also because we placed all our people as the Republican judges. So they could protect. We located the vote, we got it to the polls, and we protected it. How did, what did it mean to have your people in office? Well, number one, it, it made people feel that government could represent them. It, it made them understand that there were people who represented them in government that they could go and see. It wasn't that they had to go down to City Hall to have clout, because Jesse Madison lived right over on 4800 West Monroe. And Earlene Collins lived right over on, on 16th and, and uh, near, on, on Central Park near 16th Street. There were people from our community that, take the ride for entrance a after Dr. King's death. Our alderman, uh, George Collins, flew over this area that was burning with Richard J. Daly. 
no one here saw uh, Alderman, even though on 16th Street and Roosevelt and, and Madison, uh, uh, Madison, they had Jeeps driving up and down with 50 caliber machine guns, and they had National Guards walking two abreast from corner to corner with fixed bayonets. Sears over there had a 50 caliber on each corner of their building. No one saw a representative. We didn't see a state rep, a state senator, no one. Jesse Madison, once he became state rep, Jesse was always where people were. In fact, we would go to rallies, and folks would go to rallies of all the candidates to hear what Jesse had to say, because they didn't believe the other candidates, but they believed Jesse. That's how Jesse got those bullets. And then those of us who helped Jesse, even after Jesse had retired, folks still supported candidates that we supported because they knew that we were, Jesse had made that, that possible with his representation, and he wouldn't have been there without cumulative voting. He'll, he'll tell you that if he was here. Um, to me, he was the best elected official. He was the best campaigner I've ever worked with because he would tell it just like it was, and that's what people used to like. Um, so could you tell us a bit more about what it meant to have cumulative voting for poor urban areas like the West Side? Well, for poor urban areas like the West Side, cumulative voting, you could explain to people, because mm -hmm. folks understand numbers. If they don't understand anything else, they know how they count. And when you tell people that, you know, in order for us to win, we don't need 50% plus one, they say, what do you mean? You know, you always need a majority to win, which are not with cumulative voting. In fact, Illinois is the only state that has an office where you can give one person more than one vote, and that's cumulative voting. So if you help us, we can get Jesse Madison in. We can beat the machine. They said, well, you can't beat City Hall. We said, if you help us with cumulative voting, we can. That's the only way we can do it. We can't beat them with 50% plus one, but if you give three, and he gives three, and he gives three, and then I'd show that six bit, that means that Sims would have to give six to match your three, and Patrick would have to give six to match your three. How many sixes do they got, do they have? Each time they give six, it takes away six from their total. So we're winning. And when you show folks all that stuff, it says, oh, okay. Because see, people like to, to uh, win. People love to win. They don't want it that you're going to show doom and gloom. We never showed that. And that's why we would tell them, if you want to see change, help us. We have no money. We don't have any jobs. So everyone who would come down. But see, the good feature about that, we, we sold that concept with cumulative voting. Because of cumulative voting with Jesse Madison, in 75, we ran an automatic candidate. He didn't win, but we took the machine to a runoff. In 79, for the first time in West Side history, we elected now congressman. Alderman Danny K. Davis to the 29th War. First automatic victory in the city in, on the west side of Chicago. In all of the black wards on the west side, that was our first victory in 1979. Amazing. I mean, before we had representation, but it wasn't representation because we had puppets. We had people who would take the position but refused to take the power to represent our community. So the, peop the people who we organized around cumulative voting starting in 72 with Jesse Madison, who lost by all those votes, and I told you, we had all those judges indicted for vote fraud, and he won. And all of the people who helped Jesse was angry enough. See, people get angry when they feel cheated. They felt that they had gone out and they had gotten enough people to give Jesse his bullet votes, their bullet votes, cumulatively that he should have won. When, when they said you didn't win because we couldn't cover every precinct, because remember that was before I got a judge in each precinct. When, when we didn't win and they told us how many votes these people allegedly had stolen and they put all these people on probation, they didn't give them any time, but they were convicted of a felony. When we didn't win, that made those people more resolved to come out 74. And then in 73, it was a political thing on my part to say, well, hey, every time a Republican judge is selected, they're the wife, daughter, son, 
niece of the Democratic precinct captain, and they get all the material because they would put our watch out at 6 o'clock, posing closed. To, they closed at 6 in those days. So once they put our, wi our, our watches out, you'd have five Democratic precinct captains and, the, and, and, and the, po the, the police, I mean five judges and the Democratic precinct captain and the police. So once we had our folks placed as judges, the whole situation changed. Then we could protect. Could you talk about a real campaign? Yeah, I, I was, you, you used the word judge here, see, and we're not getting that. It's a voting. Uh, voting judges. You're never saying that word, voting judge. Oh, okay. We're thinking of a municipal judge. I'll put like election you know, judge. See, I, I follow Should I say election, election judge or well, voting whatever, judge? Voting judge, whatever you, is a okay. real, whatever they call it. And I'd like you to... Go back over that just a bit. Oh, that file. it's hard for me to... No, don't... Oh, okay. just on the judges? Yeah, just that... Oh, that, okay. Just talk about that whole thing about how... Okay, let me do that. Your, your election judge. We had to get protection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's go into that a little bit. Yeah. That, that, was, great. that was a great uh, thing. Okay. Now, but, of course, that doesn't have anything directly to do with cumulative voting. But it's so... Kind of yes, it does. No, it does. To, 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 to hold on to what you, the vote you got, to protect the vote you actually got through community voting, you had to make sure that even if you won the election, you you got you rewarded yeah. the victory. Mm -hmm. That's what go into that. But I use that word election judge, or okay? Elect, uh, voting judge. Because I followed you, but I'm from Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> right. so going, Why are you talking? Yeah, well, in 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 Chicago politics, we've got we've got each precinct has five election judges. If you're an even numbered precinct, you have three Democratic election judges and two Republican election judges. If you're an odd-numbered precinct, you have three Republican election judges and two Democrats. What we did in 1973, after Jesse Madison had, had the election stolen from him for state rep, even though we had cumulative voting in 72, I went down to the Republican headquarters, Central Committee headquarters, and talked to their chairman, who was that time was Floyd Fuller, and I said, every election we run our independents and they get ripped at the polls by the election judges. Your county and state Republican candidates get ripped at the polls by the election judges. Because instead of having three Republicans and two Democrats in the art and three Democrats and two Republicans in the even wards, at, when the polls close, you have five Democratic election judges and the precinct captain, because they usually have the policemen to put our watches out. I said, but because those election judges are usually, the Republican election judges, are usually the wives and daughters and nieces and nephews of the Democratic precinct captain. So there's no such thing as a two-party system there. I said, and there's no such thing as a Republican party on the west side. That's why you can't get real Republican judges, because 98% of the black community on the west side vote straight Democratic. So they aren't going to get any election, be become Republican judges. So I said, if you let us choose the Republican election judges, you won't have real Republican election judges, but you will have independent Democratic Democrats who will vote Republican in the primary, because the judges are supposed to vote for their party, and split in the general but guarantee a fair and honest election for all of us. So he bought that, and we placed 107 of our people as the election judges, as the Republican election judges. And that's what I was saying before. Asking them to vote Republican was like pulling teeth with no anesthetic. These were people who were, you know, if their neighbor knew that they were voting Republican, you know, they'd scream. But, and I told them, I said, but, if you'll note, every time you go to vote, who do you see as the Republican judges wearing those badges? The Democratic precinct captain's wife or his niece or his daughter? I said, you don't think that they're going to help Jesse, do you? I said, this is a tactic. I said, when you're at war, you have tactics. I said, so our tactic in this election is that we will become the Republican judges of election. And that way, we can, that one vote, we will vote Republican because that's my agreement and I have to live up to my agreement, but we'll keep 50 votes from being stolen from Jesse. How about that? They said, okay, Barnett, you know. <laughs> so they did, and that's how Jesse won with 274 votes, even though it was cumulative. But they had stolen a mint from him. 
before, but he won this time. Um, no, no, that's when he won by 2,500 and something, because he won by 274, 174 and 74. So, could you tell me again um, how what it was like when you were first approaching people about voting for Jesse, and how cumulative voting was w the way that you could convince people you could actually elect somebody? Well, first of all, I showed them what the incumbents, the state reps that we had, were not doing, Ike Sims and Langdon Patrick. And when they started telling me how difficult it was to defeat City Hall because of Daly's money and his clout and his job, this is Richard J. Daly, I said, wait a minute, that might be true for aldermen and state senate and, and congressmen and all those things, but that's not true state rep-wise. State rep-wise, we've got cumulative voting. Said, what do you mean, Barney, cumulative voting? I said, I mean, we've got an office where you can give one man more than one vote. I said, in fact, you can give one man, you can give three men one vote each with that same vote. You can give two men one and a half votes each with those same three votes. Or you can give Jesse Madison three votes. You're not going to tell me if we, Jesse's getting three to their one and a half that he can't win. So they said, that's not so. I said, sure it is. They said, I always go to vote, and I don't give anyone three votes. I said, that's because you don't understand cumulative voting. So we're going to educate our community to cumulative voting. And once we do that, watch and see, can't we win? And I said, can't we win? Because, see, if you don't include folks, they'll still be out there with, we can't win. So I included them. So they start talking to people, and it just starts snowballing. So that's how Jesse Madison won. And then with the impetus from that, because once you get people involved and they get a baby victory, and that's what Jesse's first victory was. It was a baby step victory. But that made their chest pop up. Now they want to go on to something else. So we went on to Orlean Collins. And then we went on a couple of years later to Danny Davis for the automatic seat. So all of this stemmed from you getting people involved in what they could have and show them how they can have a possible victory. And then once that victory comes to fruition, then you're into something. Because then they have been energized, they feel strong, they'll go out and, and talk to other people. Um, do you think the, uh, those sort of effects helped uh, Harold Washington's campaign at all? Oh, not only did it help Harold Washington, it was because of it. Because of the amount of people that we had gotten involved cumulatively to help Jesse Madison and Earlene Collins and Danny Davis. Remember, Danny's election, the first automatic victory in West Side history, was 79. Harold ran in 83. And remember, we start leading up to that because each time that we would run a, candidate, a campaign, we would start doing voter registration. And then all of a sudden, in 82, we came alive. What, what was it, come alive and, no, what was it, come alive something? No. Anyway, but we came alive and we went out and registered a mint of people. And that's, that was how Harold got elected because Harold said, I'll run if you will register 50,000 people. We registered 150,000 people. He said, I'll run if, if Alan Streeter defeat Jane Byrne's candidate. We all went out and helped Streeter defeat Jane Byrne's candidate, who was the mayor at that time. I even put out a button after Streeter's victory, Streeter beat her, Harold will defeat her. <laughs> it was the craziest button, but it was good. So could you talk a bit about how it takes time to build a coalition like that and the role of getting started with that baby step victory with James Madison? I've always told pe folks that if, if you're going to do anything, you got to do it coalition-wise. Uh, when we were talking about running Jesse for state rep and how we could possibly win with the cumulative vote, the first thing I thought of, well, what about the folks in Oak Park? I mean, I'm not going to take it for granted that every one of them are Republican. Uh, you might have some that are independent like we are. Let's go across Austin and see if we can't find some independents in Oak Park who think like we do that uh, uh, the, the state reps of this state 
isn't representing them, just like they're not representing the west side of Chicago. Representation is representation. So when we went over there, I started asking. First, I went to the village hall, and they just happened to have had a nice lady there named, named I'm trying to think of her name. She just retired about two years ago. I, it'll come to me. But I talked to her, and she said, well, you know, we've got an independent group, the Independent Democratic Party of Oak Park. So I said, great. So I found out who their chairperson was. It was Tom Kane. I called Tom Kane and set up a meeting, and we met at a restaurant in Oak Park on Harlem Avenue called Otto. I took my wife there for a duck dinner one Easter. It's no longer there. It's got some condominiums there now. But we met there, and Jesse Madison and I told him who we were and, and that we were independents east of Austin, and we wanted to get with them west of Austin to see if we couldn't elect Jesse as a state rep through the cumulative voting system. I said, we can do it. If we can get, I said, because at that time we didn't have the judges, so we knew that we couldn't control inside the polling place. I said, but if we can get help from you folks, because you have a two-party system, you have real Democrats and real Republican judges, and if we can get help from your 39 precincts, which was in Oak Park, then we might can hold them close enough east of Austin to, that you could become the plurality of that election. So they bought it. And they did, except they stole it from us in 72, but we came back in 74. and then with the judges in place, we won it. We're with the election judges in place in every precinct, one in each of the 107 precincts. It was the craziest thing that you'd ever want to see. But when, once we did that, because of that cumulative voting year, the 24th Ward, this ward, that used to always vote anywhere from, from 16,000 to 18,000 people. When, when, when Eisenhower ran for president, and one Chicago, this ward voted against Eisenhower 18 to 1, to show you how strong the Democrats were in here. They voted 18,000 people in here, and only 1,000 Republicans voted, and those were the d Republican judges and a few of the old-timers who were true, truly Republican uh, voters. But we, uh, that's what we had to come up against. When we placed a judge in every precinct for Jesse Madison 74 election, when he ran for state rep through cumulative voting, this ward voted 9,000 people and then vote that high count again until Harold ran in 83. Because with that one person in there, that judge in, that election judge in there, they said, I'm not going to jail for anybody. So we start getting some honest counts. Now imagine going down from 18,000 to 9,000. Even when they weren't opposed, when there was no candidate running against them, they voted 16 to 18,000. But it was, it was a trip. It was dangerous. Um, some people say now, and a lot of the controversy now is over whether white representatives can adequately represent black constituents and vice versa. And, some t and I've heard a bit that in cumulative voting, a lot of representatives could represent people of the opposite race even better than some of the machine people had been doing previously. If you talk to anyone in Oak Park concerning representation when Jesse Madison was state rep, Jesse just got so much help from Oak Park. Oak Park was our, was our, now no, because of Jesse being the state rep, which he won through cumulative voting, that's how Rolene Collins won by 62 votes. Her plurality came from Oak Park, those 39 precincts in Oak Park. And if you talk to the people in Oak Park, the whites in Oak Park, about Jesse Madison as a state rep, or either Art Turner as a state rep, Oak Park was cut up into four different representative districts when Art Turner became state rep. Art Turner's promise to the people of Oak Park that if the situation ever arise where I can get Oak Park into one rep seat, which would give them more power, 
because even with cumulative voting, if you're cutting the four different districts, cumulative voting and nothing else is going to help your power because you got four different state reps running around or more. So I said, if I can ever, if the situation ever presents itself and I can put all of Oak Park in one district, I'm going to do it. So in the 1980 census, I drew a map, and plus they had a map. The Republicans had a map that would have put all of Oak Park in the one district. The entire Democratic Party voted for Madigan's map. Our Turner voted for the map that would put Oak Park in one district, all of it. For that, because the Democrats won the toss, and that map lost, the one Art voted for lost by one vote, they punished Art by giving him a 61% new district that uh, really hurt him. Um, that's it for this tape.